If you're watching this video, you're probably wondering if you should choose between Rome Research or Obsidian for your personal knowledge management and note-taking needs. This is Justin from Effective Remote Work, and today we're going to answer that exact question. Which is better for you, Rome or Obsidian? Rome and Obsidian belong to a class of note-taking applications that I like to call next-generation note-taking software. In my mind, Obsidian and Rome are the two frontrunners in this class. Both are primarily geared towards building knowledge versus simply capturing and storing information. If you look at note-taking softwares like Evernote or Apple Notes or even Bear, many of these tools are designed for inputting information in and organizing it in some way and then retrieving it at a later date. Now, with the Zettelkasten method and other modes of thought towards knowledge building and knowledge management, there is a now a drive towards trying to build something with that knowledge. And that's what Obsidian and Rome really focus on. Now, the basic building block in these pieces of software that allows us is the easy ability to link to software and retain that context when you're navigating around your knowledge graph. In both Rome and Obsidian, we'll take a look at these in just a second, it's very easy to create a backlink or a link. All you have to do is uh, use double square brackets around any piece of text. It can be a word, a phrase, a sentence even, and that creates a page for you. And then you can go into that page and at the bottom or in a different spot, uh, it'll show a list of what's called backlinks. Backlinks just show you where that note was linked from in other notes. Another big feature these softwares offer is a visualization of a knowledge graph where you can see your notes as nodes on a networked graph so you can see how they're connected together. But this is where the similarities between the software begin to end. Now, before we dive into the specifics of Rome and Obsidian and what's best for you, I wanted to talk briefly on price. I'm not going to gripe on prices for either of these softwares here, but I wanted to give you a good outline of what they cost so that you can make an effective decision. Obsidian is free for personal use. You can choose to support the developers while they're in beta by buying what's called a Catalyst license, and there will be paid add-ons like end-to-end -end encrypted sync and publishing that are in the pipeline. They're not ready yet, but they will be available for a monthly subscription at different rates so that the developers of Obsidian can continue to develop the software as time goes on. Rome is by far the more controversial choice here because their main plan starts at $15 a month, and then there are discounts if you choose to pay annually or on the visionary five-year pay up front plan. Yes, Rome's price is high in a traditional software sense, but I primarily bring that up for you to be aware, to be able to make your own decisions because price is merely a reflection of the value something provides. If you get $15 a month worth of value out of Rome Research, I definitely recommend that you go for it. And if not, then there are alternatives like Obsidian that you can evaluate into your workflow. So next, we're going to do a dive into Rome and Obsidian each and take a look at a few different categories on where these softwares differ that might help you make a decision. We're going to look at what the atomic note unit is in each software, the structure of the applications, backlinks, customization, the development of the applications, and then also the community around the applications. So now let's take a look at Rome. All right, folks, we're here inside of Rome Research. The first thing I wanna mention is the atomic unit of notes inside of Rome Research. And you can see it is primarily a bullet list. Well, these bullets aren't just bullets though, they are considered blocks. So you can see I have a couple of blocks here. And if I go under here and indent it, one cool thing you can do with Rome is you can embed blocks in other places. So we'll do a block reference. And then this is a block of content. So you can see it pulls in an identifier, which each one of these bullets has. If I click out of there, then it pulls this information in. It's really, really powerful to be able to reference these pieces of content. You can also use something called the sidebar in Rome to kind of navigate around different notes and as it's kind of a holding area for things that you're working on. So say if I wanted to go to this horizons page, 
uh, on the left-hand side of my shortcuts panel, all I would have to do is shift click it, and then it would open up here inside of my uh, sidebar. You can collapse them, you can open up multiple different ones there, so you have this kind of hidden over to the side at all times and gives you a nice way, a workspace to work on things while you're working in this space too. Another neat thing about Rome, and we'll head over to the graph view real quick, is you can see this nice presentation of how your notes are linked together. Now I'm gonna zoom in because mine's super wide. I'm gonna head over to my book note here. If you click on it, you can see all the different links of where that note is, or the, where that note is linked to and from. If I double click on it and open it up here, you can see how uh, all the linked references here. I don't actually have any text in this note in particular. This is more of just a concept note or a, just a node that references other nodes or that nodes can reference um, just for you know, purposes of kind of gathering information with these linked references. If I click on how to take smart notes, it'll take me to the how to take smart notes page. It'll show me the linked reference here as well. It's pretty powerful to be able to see what is there, but another cool thing you can do is actually filter the page. So if you click on the filter here, any of the references that are below, you can filter by. So if I wanna filter by how to take smart notes, it'll filter down to all the ones that reference how to take smart notes, that particular page. And if I want it to narrow down to April 16th, 2020, I can do that as well. It's really powerful to be able to filter down those references, especially if you have lots of them on a page or a note that you are using quite frequently. Let's head back over to daily notes. And there are a couple other things that I wanna chat through with Rome Research in particular. First of all, Rome is a SaaS application. That's software as a service. There are no, at this point in time, local applications that you download. All of your data is hosted on Rome's servers. And per their privacy policy and data access policy, you own all that data. They're not going to access it unless you give them explicit permission to do so. But the caveat with that is that like Evernote, like Notion, you are 100% dependent upon their service functioning and taking care of your data and making sure that it has integrity and they don't lose any of it. It's just a reality of SaaS applications in general. It's pretty common these days. Uh, but for you, if you're not interested in loading all your data up in a SaaS app, that's something to consider. Another small caveat is that there's not really a true offline mode at this point in time. The last I heard is that it's primarily browser cache based. So there's a cache in your browser where it temporarily stores files, and that's where Rome stores data on a temporary basis while you're offline. And then when you go back online, it syncs it up. The caveat there is that if you clear your cache frequently and you forget to sync up your data, or if you close your browser and your browser does it automatically, then your changes are gone before they're synced up. Something to be aware of if you're working offline on a frequent basis. We'll click into customization here real quick. There are a few ways you can customize Rome Research. There are themes that you can add. There are community built themes. You can also build your own themes as well using uh, CSS. And then also uh, soon there will be a, an API that you can hook up to and gain access to your data. I don't have any technical details on that API at this point in time, but since it's a web service, you're not necessarily going to be able to extend the functionality of Rome Research necessarily, but you can take your data, access it, transform it in some way, potentially ship it back to the application or automatically load data into Rome via a service like Zapier or if this, then that potentially, uh, something that allows you to use webhooks or send um, you know, requests to the API to be able to access that. You'll be able to develop scripts or potentially even have your own clients and of the sort if the API is robust enough to do that. Another thing to look at with Rome Research is the development. Rome's development is very fast paced. They've been releasing a ton of features. If you didn't notice when we were looking at the slash commands here, I mean, there are to do's, different types of references and embeds. You can add times. There's a Pomodoro timer, dates, highlighting and different uh, formattings 
calculators. Uh, you can in input different types of information like diagrams, tables, Kanban boards, YouTube videos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here, but uh, with the pace and the different kinds of features that they're adding, just one personal concern that I've had with it is that is it going to get too muddled and kind of muddle the functionality of what this software can do? There's a lot of capability here with Realm Research. I mean, you could do task management, note management, all sorts of stuff inside of this software uh, because of these features. But long term, I mean, we've seen software like Evernote uh, add a ton of stuff around it that wasn't necessarily super helpful. If the developers are able to keep a laser focus on what this software does, it's going to be a good thing. But if they get too far beyond that, it definitely wouldn't be very good uh, for the software. This might not be a concern for you, but it's definitely something to keep in mind when looking at Chrome research. Let's hop on over to community. The community here reminds me very much of the early 2000s Apple. As a visionary leader, it tends to have an exclusive feel, a little elitist to a sense, and it's very highly intellectual. If you can get on board with that kind of a community on Twitter, and they have a Slack community as well, then I think this would be a good fit for you. But since you're going to be learning a lot of knowledge management workflows and probably looking to other members of the community for their ideas and how they're using the software, if that doesn't jive with you, then you might not have as enjoyable of an experience using Roam Research long term. So with that, let's head on over to Obsidian to take a look at how Obsidian implements some of these features and how it's different from Roam Research. All right, and here we are in Obsidian. The first thing I wanted to note here is the atomic structure and unit of notes in Obsidian is a little different from Roan in that it's primarily text files. And the unit of note taking here is not bullets, but it's more paragraphs and headings. You can link directly to headings inside of a note or you can link directly to notes. Now, the way you would link to a note in Obsidian is that you just use these double square brackets and then it comes up with this nice thing. If I wanna link to the full focus planner, so to say, we can do that. And then if I open up the full focus planner in another pane by just uh, command shift click, I can see that if I click over here, then I get all of my linked mentions on the right hand side. Unlinked mentions here also show different uh, notes that uh, contain the inf that word um, that's in the title or that phrase that's in the title and I can link those if I so choose to. Um, one difference here that you might notice is at this point in time with Obsidian, you can't filter linked mentions, and it just shows the line that they're on. Um, it's not a full block. You can't do block embedding like you can in Roam. So that may be a, a feature that you might want or you might not care about when deciding between these two applications. Something else to keep in mind with Obsidian is that the app structure is primarily local. So what this means for you is at this point in time, even though they have end-to-end -end encrypted sync coming down the pipe right now, you have to roll your own sync between devices. It's easy enough though, because at the base of Obsidian, it's just an application that reads markdown files which are just text files with a special extension on them called .md. So you can load that folder up into Google Drive, Dropbox, whatever syncing software that you use and sync it. But at this point in time, it's important to remember that there are no mobile clients, though that's on the developer's list to make at some point in the future. You can use a software like OneWriter on iOS. I've got a video for that that I'll link in the description that you can check out as well if that's going to be helpful for you. As far as customization goes in Obsidian, the community can make themes. If you go into settings, there's a plugin you can turn on called Custom CSS. And then, uh, you know, I've got one already selected here, which changes the look of it. I'm going to go back to the original light view one by turning that plugin off, which is kind of cool. You can build your own themes with it because this is basically a web app in a wrapper. So you can just create, you know, themes using CSS and the like. Um, the other thing that's coming down the pipe eventually will be a plugin API. So if you see on the left-hand side here, we've got this open random note, creating a new Zettelkasten note, the today note. Those are all plugins inside of Obsidian that the developers have created that you can turn on and off. The beauty I think about the plugin API, um, which getting down to development, is that I think it enables the developers of the software to retain focus 
on the core elements of what makes Obsidian a powerful piece of software. So instead of having to add all these extra features uh, that the community might want directly to the application, the community can start to develop these plugins to maybe add a Kanban board or maybe add YouTube embeds or the like to the application. Another nice thing though about development with Obsidian is that it's very fast paced. They're constantly iterating on it. They're constantly fixing bugs. Uh, even it's in beta right now, but it's a very stable piece of software. I definitely think it's in a good state at this point in time to use if you are interested in using it full time. And lastly, since we've talked about a lot of other uh, aspects of Obsidian in other videos, which again, I'll link below in the description if you're interested in taking a look at those, is the community. The community around Obsidian, I like to think, is more like an open source software community, even though Obsidian isn't open source software. There's a sense of practicality around people thinking about the software, how they're using it, and they tend to be pretty helpful with one another. If you like a little bit more laid back of a community around software that you're using when trying to seek help, Obsidian might be a better fit for you. So, which is better for you between Rome and Obsidian? Well, I hope that it's been obvious as we've been talking through these two that the choice is ultimately up to you. Both softwares have their strengths and weaknesses. I really think Rome is better for a person highly invested in linking every little thought and bit of knowledge together and potentially with other people. I know something they have on their roadmap is the ability to have these broad collective uh, vaults and knowledge graphs that you can link between one another. And there's a number of people who are creating public knowledge graphs too to be able to share that information with other people at this point in time. But Rome may not be the best choice for you if you don't want a software as a service SaaS app that comes with the price tag of $15 a month. Obsidian, I think, is better for someone who is looking to have more control over their data. You get text files, and you can port those around between any computer that you want to using whatever syncing service you want to. You can even port them back and forth on a thumb drive if you want, and that'll work just fine uh, between computer if you don't want that data to ever hit the internet. If you don't need block level linking and the, that transclusion that's included uh, where you can embed other blocks and you're okay working with Markdown, I do think that Obsidian is a great choice for you. Again, ultimately the choice is up to you. The best thing to do is to dive into these pieces of software for yourself, take a look, play around with them, try to get an idea of what you like and don't like, explore the communities, see if you like the communities as well, and then make a decision which is best for you. That being said, I hope you found this video helpful as an overview between Obsidian and Rome and how you might be able to make some decisions about which software is better for you. Again, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Which are you using, Obsidian or Rome, and why? And we'll catch you in the next one.